So I've been using the Galaxy S22 Ultra for nearly three weeks now, but the model I have is running on the Samsung made Exynos chip, while the US version is powered by a different, supposedly more powerful processor, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Well, finally, I have that model too, so we can compare the two side by side and see if there are really any big differences in performance, battery life and even the camera. Hey guys, Vic here with Phone Arena and I'll be running a few tests on both models, but first let's say that both phones are fully charged to 100% here, so we have the same conditions on both and we're using the same settings. We have set the brightness to the same level, the screens are set at 1080p resolution, the processors are running in the default optimized power mode and both phones have no active SIM card inside and are both in a do not disturb mode setting. So with all of this in mind, let's kick this off with Geekbench 5, a benchmark that tests the CPU performance and is a great starting point. So during the first run, we can see that the Snapdragon version on the right pulls slightly ahead and at the end of the test finishes with the better score. And just in case, we're running this test back to back two more times to see if the results will stay consistent. So let's see the second run and the result that we get. And that's the result on the second run, again a slight difference. And finally one last run on both phones, Geekbench 5. Once again you can see the scores on your screen right now and judging by this test alone we can see single core CPU performance being about 7-8% to faster on the Snapdragon model consistently while multi-core performance is about the same on both phones, even actually a bit lower on the Snapdragon chip, but again the difference there is very tiny. And next up, we let the phones rest for just a short while and we start our next benchmark, which is 3 Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. And this benchmark is super intense on the GPU. It's a game simulation and you can see that even these newest phones cannot hit the optimal 30 frame per second target on this test. So it runs for 20 minutes straight and it's a great measure for not just that initial burst of performance that you get with most chips, but also shows a more realistic picture of what happens after a few minutes of gameplay. After all, when you play games, you usually play them for at least 10 minutes or probably more. So that is definitely the more relevant score that you need to know about. So we are approaching the end of the stress test and here are the results that we get. Now the Snapdragon version of the S22 Ultra starts with a higher score, but both models quickly throttle and lose that initial steam as the temperature in the processor rises and towards the end of the test it is actually the Exynos model that runs a bit faster, which is definitely interesting. And here's how the scores go round by round, you can clearly see the throttling happening after the first few rounds and how the scores dip after a few minutes. And just to make this extra tough, we will run the same stress test once again and also do a quick checkup on the battery stats to see if we have any differences. So we let the benchmark run its course and the results are actually a bit shocking on the second one to be honest. They are significantly lower than the first one on both models. And towards the end of the second run, we are seeing both chips again drop even further, but this time it's the Exynos chip that actually manages to maintain at least some speed, while the Snapdragon dips significantly, especially towards the very end. And that is interesting. While the Snapdragon version had a noticeable advantage in CPU performance, on the GPU front, the Exynos processor is able to better maintain performance over time. Okay, with performance benchmarks out of the way, we can see that battery on these two phones drains really similarly. Take a look at the battery meter here, but let's see if that will continue with just regular use. Now, we're playing YouTube videos in 1080p quality on both phones, and we kick this off with the Exynos S22 Ultra actually having a bit of an advantage. It has 81% battery level versus 79% on the Snapdragon version which has drained a bit quicker so far. So we let the YouTube test run for a full hour and we come back to check the phones after that and see how they're doing in terms of battery life and we see that one hour video playback has drained exactly 12% on the Exynos version and 11% on the Snapdragon model again very similar so the difference between the two is really tiny. Okay, time to move on and finally we have one more test that we were curious about. Now we know that the camera on these phones drains battery like crazy on the S22 Ultra. So for this test we fired up 10 times zoom video at 4K quality and let it run for 30 minutes straight. And that indeed drained the battery super fast. 
Just for half an hour, the Exynos version lost 11% battery, while the Snapdragon model lost 10%, similar to one hour of YouTube video playback. And at the end of the 30 minute run, both phones stood at actually exactly 57% battery level on both. So from these tests, we have to conclude that battery life on both the Exynos and the Snapdragon version of the S22 Ultra is about the same, no significant difference. But last year something else differed too between the Exynos and the Snapdragon version, the camera quality. So just to check, we snapped a few pictures around the office and what do you know? Unfortunately, there is a very real difference here. Photos from the Snapdragon version of the S22 Ultra consistently seem to have cleaner, sharper detail and more vibrant colors. And the Exynos model in comparison often has various issues with photos colors are bleaker across all photos very consistently but also you get to see a lot more noise like in this photo here and it's actually not something that we expected to that extent but the snapdragon version of the s22 ultra definitely captures far more pleasing looking photos all throughout so at the end of the day if we have to make some conclusions the one thing that we were hoping to see in the snapdragon model having longer battery life does not seem to be the case. Now I have been using the Exynos version for a few weeks and I have to say battery life is just decent but nothing more than that as I'm consistently getting around five hours of screen time with just social media use without using the camera almost at all and it seems that's what you'd also be getting on the Snapdragon version. And the other thing is about performance. Yes, the Snapdragon all scores higher for CPU performance but the difference is in the single digits and when it comes to GPU and gaming Oh, well, actually the Snapdragon suffers from, from more aggressive throttling than the Exynos chip, which actually outscores it. And finally, if you care about the camera, then the S22 Ultra Exynos version definitely proves to be a bit of a letdown with those bleaker colors and less detail than the S22 Ultra running on a Snapdragon chip. So this will do it for this video. It was an interesting one for me to see and I'll be curious to know if you expected to see these results. And I will also be sharing my thoughts on the S22 Ultra after nearly a month of use very soon. So stay tuned for that video. And as always, thanks for watching, support peace in the world, stay healthy, subs if you love the video, and I'll talk to you in the next one.